Welcome to Y Lab, the makerspace located in the basement workshops of the historic David Dunlap Observatory in Richmond Hill, Ontario, Canada, and where in that building on the right, all the old wiring was ripped out and replaced with new, modern, well-grounded wiring for your safety. Lesson 12 in our Canadian Amateur Radio Training Series is about grounding and safety. On this quiz, you need to get 100%. No errors, so keep working the quizzes until you achieve that goal. This is a matter of life and death. So, what do you need to ground? Everything that can be grounded. Your antenna transmission line, your power supply, your receiver, transmitter, transceiver, your antenna tuner, your tower, Anything involved in it should have a safety ground. Now, terminology. If something inside your radio is shorted, they say the chassis is live. That means there's power looking for somewhere to go. And if your chassis isn't grounded, it's just sitting there waiting for something like you, the meat sack, to touch it and become the ground. And uh, you'll know when that happens, if you survive. What do I ground it to? The best, well, there's a separate ground system with metal going into the ground. Yep, ground as in the dirt type, not the electrical ground. And, you know, for big stuff like towers, we're talking a copper rod, three meters long, 10 feet minimum into the ground. If you get the training guide, that reference we suggest you buy, uh, it will tell you about all kinds of tricks, like burying car radiators in the ground. Now, if you're not using a big tower, simpler stuff, you might get away with a metallic cold water pipe. Okay? Because it's metal, and think of it, that cold water pipe to your house is coming through the ground. So, you know, it is a great ground. And then the most conductive metal is best. So copper or copper clad steel for your grounding. That water pipe inside your house is usually copper. So that new plastic pep, PEX pipe or the ABS drain pipe looks like black plastic. No, that's not going to work. Your typical ground connection inside the chassis is often a green wire. And you'll see it going from the circuit board and connected to the chassis. Chassis is a fancy word for the case, and the case for your radio is usually metal. So if any wire inside goes astray, it will touch metal, and your case should be grounded. Now, the three-prong plug that comes with your radio is usually grounded. That third cable is there, but you'll notice on the back of your radio and your components, especially the HF gear, there is a connection for ground. You can hook something to that and hook it all the way back to a, a copper pipe or something. Always a good idea to do that. If you're in an old house, you don't know if your grounds are working properly. You may also be sending signals back to everything else in the house if there's a surge. So if you can avoid that, just go direct to a copper pipe. Uh, it's a lot better. Now, uh, here's a ground wire gotcha. Your ground wire is a piece of wire, and any piece of wire can become an antenna. Let's look at uh, what may be a worst case scenario. So you're on the upper floor of a building, and uh, you decided to ground with uh, a cable that's 10 meters long running down the side of the building. And, you know, you've got a big copper pipe in the ground. And uh, wait a minute, 10 meters, that uh, sounds like a radio wavelength. So in other words, your ground wire has now become a really nice antenna for picking up signals. Now, if you have a transmitting antenna nearby, it can be spitting out a lot of power. And if you're close by, you're going to be picking up a lot of that energy. So your ground cable is grabbing that. And yes, it can go back into your receiver and shock you. So try and keep your ground cable short. So in this case, it may be an advantage and a safety thing to go to an inside water pipe instead of you know, running that piece of copper all the way down the side of the building. Then antenna grounding for lightning. 
Okay. Um, except for your chassis connection, a lot of stuff is not necessarily grounded during operation, especially if it's a balanced line. And that's the ladder line. If you have a non-balanced line, it has ground. Okay, so always think a lightning risk. So if you're not operating your radio, disconnect your antenna. I mean, it's the risk. It's way out there. Disconnect power when you're not operating. That, you know, a minor way of doing that is having a power bar with a big switch. It is a good idea to unplug as much equipment as possible when you're not using it. Or at least have, you know, half decent power bar with surge protection. Okay. And then when you disconnect it, ground your antenna wire in case lightning comes in. It can jump across things. <clears throat> if you can, ground it outside. You can get a ground connection with a lightning arrestor as close to the antenna and the earth as possible. And that applies to your antenna rotator as well. So that's if you have a tower antenna, uh, you might have a Yagi up there and a rotator to turn it in the direction you want. And how your rotator is mounted, it may be, you know, mounted with plastic and stuff, so it's not sharing electrical ground with your tower. So you need to make sure that that's grounded as well. Now, if you're really serious and have an antenna tower, we've just talked about ground and electrical stuff. Uh, there's something simpler that can happen. You can fall off the tower if you're up there working. So if you are working in an antenna tower, wear approved safety equipment, harness everything else that meets your local standards. You need to look that up if you're going to be looking at uh, working on a tower. The antenna should not be reachable from people working on the from people on the ground. We've addressed that before where we said if the antenna is too close, people can be burned, and especially the eyes, the most vulnerable. So it should be high enough or have suitable barriers to prevent human contact. And you know, if you have a tower, don't leave a ladder on it where people can climb up. Okay, again, remember RF can be at microwave frequencies and cause burns. It does a great job of heating human tissue. And again, those eyes that are filled with nice liquid, oh, microwaves love that. If you're up on the tower, people below should be wearing hard cat hats because you may be clumsy and drop things. Um, if I'm up on the tower, people may run away. Okay, and then anytime you're up on the tower, turn off, disconnect power first. That can't be stressed enough. People who work professionally on antennas have had severe, severe microwave burns because transmitters are left on. Now, but what about that handheld radio you've got? Well, handhelds generally limit power to about 5 watts. But caution is still required. And some handhelds we're seeing now are like 7, 8 watts. So you can reduce the RF exposure by keeping it farther from your head when transmitting. And that applies to your head and other people's heads, of course. And uh, you can usually get a headset and a mic pretty cheap, which makes it a lot more comfortable to use. Uh, particularly if you're using it at home, if it's your first set, you can hook it up to an antenna and not have to be holding it. You just use the mic and you're keeping a fair distance from it. Also, if you're using it that way, you can get a separate antenna. Um, some of the clubs make a J-pole antenna, so you've got a piece of coax going even from your little handheld to a J-pole, uh, and it really increases your range and keeps it away from your head. Now, also think of antenna location caution. So, yes, you can place an antenna in an attic, but don't be stupid. The same safety rules apply located away from where humans are. Don't use it if you know humans are there. So if it's over your kids' bedrooms, you're not using that when the kids are in there. And it's a bad idea to have it over the kids' rooms anyway. If you're using a directional antenna like a Yagi, don't point it at buildings or at people or you know locations where there are people. It should generally be higher than adjacent, than adjacent buildings because of the way it can direct the power. Now take quiz number 12. 
So again, all the links are in the comments section below. And because this stuff could kill you, don't stop until you can pass quiz 12 with 100% accuracy. Again, we're YLab at https colon slash slash ylab.ca.